burning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All right, folks, welcome back. We have got the head honcho at Sunset Ranch, an entrepreneur like you would not believe, married to the beautiful Miss Ruth Buzzy, probably the only John Wayne left in this town. Welcome, Mr. Kent Perkins. <laughs> yeah, well, us John Waynes are getting a little long in the tooth, to tell you the truth. Hey, I'm with you. But I'm doing pretty good. I guarantee it, man. We're glad to have you on here, man. How is the weather in Texas this morning? Right now, it's idyllic. It's uh, 70 degrees, 71 degrees, and uh, there's a big orange sun coming up in the in the east. It's just gorgeous right now. It's going to get a little warm today, but we've had the coolest, wettest summer in my entire recollection. It's been magnificent. The grass looks like Ireland everywhere in Texas. Right now. And that's not usual in Texas. This time of year, usually everything's brown. Yeah, brown. pretty much. What part of Texas are you from? <laughs> Uh, North Central Texas. We're about 60 miles west of Fort Worth, living on a ranch. Outstanding. Beautiful and, uh, ranch. And married my, to uh, Ruth Buzzy. Now, y'all, I've told y'all, y'all need to, I mean, honestly, that had to be. Y'all, now, you he had, did a lot of movies in I his know own it, right. But <laughs> he, you had to have the most amazing life married to the most amazing, hilarious person in the world. Yeah, someone the other day asked me, Kent, they said, uh, I know you've been to Washington, D.C. We're looking for a great restaurant and want your recommendation. And I said, well, I'll tell you the truth. I've been to Washington, D.C. three times, and the only place I've ever eaten there is the White House (laughs) (laughs) because of my wife. (laughs) Well, now, have you been been invited back to the White House lately? No, they don't. I I, I think they look at Facebook before they (laughs) invite (laughs) people. No, I haven't been. I mean, I'm considered a person, persona non grata, which means uh, person not wanted just a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> we know how you hey, feel. We're deplorables, too, man. We're deplorables, too. Golly. Golly, that is so funny. But anyway, now uh, you've had an amazing career over the over the time, no doubt. And actually, John Snyder beat you out of the Dukes of Hazard, which I wished you'd have got it because it had been a whole lot better, I think. Of course, I like John fine, but, you know, he's just. John. John's a great guy, yeah. uh, you know, but God punishes. He's been flooded three times. There you go. That's biblical. Yeah. There you I go. I think that's biblical. <laughs> He's a great guy, though, dear friend, and I've helped him dig out those floods twice. You know, I, I haven't been down there this time, but he is a great human being. No uh, doubt. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I met him, you know, at the audition for Dukes of Hazard, and uh, they had screened 300 people, all, you know, blonde here, blue-eyed cowboy types, and uh, John's 11 years younger than me. Well, that age difference really worked for him. <laughs> it did well for him because the show went for seven or eight years, and uh, he looked like a kid the whole time, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah he did. Hey, t- uh, tell me this. This is something pretty interesting. You have got a very rare 57 Chevy convertible. Tell us about this. Now, I want to exactly wrote – tell us about the – it's in a book now, and, and – how, how did you end up with this? This is actually Steve McQueen. Is that right? Yeah, it was Steve McQueen's car. Uh, he was the first owner. Technically, he bought it for his wife, but it was in his name. He bought the car for his wife, and he ordered it from the Van Nuys Chevrolet plant, and they delivered it to him uh, with the 283 cubic inch engine, and uh, he ordered it for his wife, and then... He found out later that he could have ordered the uh, fuel-injected 
version. So he had the Chevrolet house converted to fuel injection. So it's a it's a it's a fuel injected '57 Chevrolet convertible, fire engine red with the silver and silver and uh, silver and red interior. You know. It's a, um, well, now it's what a convertible. is what is the book that it was in? You said it was in a book. Yeah, uh, three or four years ago, uh, Chad McQueen wrote the foreword for and edited uh, a book called McQueen's Machine, The Cars of Steve McQueen. And he had them put a whole page in there devoted to the 57 Chevy. He loved that car. Um, When he was in the third grade, his mother used to drive him to Beverly Hills Elementary in that school, in that car. (laughs) And he said it created a small crowd every time they pulled up in this 57 Chevy brand spanking new red convertible. Well, he was a little hot shot uh, on campus at the elementary school with that car. And it, it had great memories for him. His mother loved it. She drove it a lot. Uh, his dad put one of those steering wheel knobs on the car, and we, we've left it there. It's still there. It's from the Motion Pictures Producers Association, and it's faded out, but you can read it. It says MMPA from Motion Picture Producers Association. So that's still there, and and the car was authenticated by Chad uh, McQueen, and I loaned it on his request. I loaned it to the Peterson Museum for 12 years. Wow. And it was on, they had a uh, Steve McQueen display there. So it was there for 12 years, but I moved to Texas, and uh, I decided I needed my car back, so uh, I sent for it one day. And they brought it here, and uh, happily ever after. I take it to little local car club meetings and things, but I don't really show cars. Right. Well, you've got a, uh, quite a collection, man. You've got some beautiful stuff. There's no doubt. But that. Well, I I, I overbuilt. I built a twenty car garage. You have <laughs> to fill it. it. You have up. to fill it up. Yeah, fill it up. <laughs> We so, kind of overbuilt for the neighborhood here. <laughs> you, you, pro- you ought to come take a look at Steven's collection. Yeah, mine. Yeah, well, you're, you're I would like love that. to see it. Yeah, you'd like that. What kind of cars? What kind of cars, Steve? Mostly you, rusty, like? rusty, leaking oil, junk. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I like big cars. I've got a couple of Corvettes and stuff, but my favorites are like the big Lincolns and that kind of stuff. That's what I like to ride around. I in. understand your neighbors would like you to move them off your lawn, though. Yeah, sure. but anyway, yeah, I like the big cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they put, give me one more ticket for that car up on blocks, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know what? There's, there's, old cars bring back good good memories. You know, the cars from the '60s and '70s right. they bring back great memories for us old folks. And I, I like big cars too. I have a '75 uh, Eldorado convertible. Oh yeah, I've got a '69 Pontiac Bonneville 428 four barrel convertible. Wow, '65 uh, Thunderbird convertible. I like old convertibles from the sixties and seventies. I do too. I used to, I've got a couple of convertibles and I let the wind blow through my scalp. Now it used to be my hair, but now it's just my scalp. You know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't tell it, you know, these people picturing you, you've got this resonant voice and they think, you know, this guy with wavy black hair. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> you shouldn't yeah. blow your image. You know? No. <laughs> Remember you, you, you you're enjoying great protection there behind that microphone. I know it, but when they <laughs> see me, they're like, really, they're like, you look like a bald headed Jack Nicholson. I said, well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's better than looking like a bald headed Art Carney or a oh, there you Don. Go. A Don. <laughs> now you think you think is Ruthie's Matt- doing Ruthie's doing a lot of uh, she's doing a lot of resting and laying around and having fun and uh, riding around on the ranch with the dogs. We. We uh, our entertainment mostly is just hanging around the house nowadays. You know, we're we're not uh, we're not out there like we once were right. doing stuff. Uh, it's a it's a crazy I, time, man. It's a crazy time. I, it's just beyond belief. I don't know what the heck's going to happen. I really don't. Do you think Matthew McConaughey is he still running for governor? I haven't heard much about that lately. Uh, he's extremely popular. Uh, he's a real gentleman. Right. I don't know him personally. We have mutual friends, but everybody that knows him really thinks highly of him. Um, I didn't know he was a Texan. Um, as far as I knew, he lived in New Orleans. I've seen his house right, <laughs> right, right next to, right next to. Uh, well, it's, it's down there near Bourbon Street right. in, a, in, in a real pretty area, uh, mostly townhomes. 
I just, uh, I don't know if he, I, you know, of course, Texas, y'all are doing pretty good. If y'all pull out of the union, man, if y'all pull out of America, I'm, I'm, you're going to wake up one morning, look out there and you're going to see a bald headed Jack Nicholson cleaning your pool. That's going to be forgot, me. I'm moving. I'm oh, moving. He's a little rounder than Jack Nicholson. Well, though, anyway, so it won't be, you won't get it. Like, Where's this bald headed Jack Nicholson cleaning my pool? I'm like, hey, Ken, it's me. Okay. Well, you can, you can clean the pool, but if you're fat, no speedo. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully okay. that's what law enforcement up here has been telling them, too. <laughs> i got to tell you one story. You reminded me of something when you mentioned, uh, when you mentioned, uh, well, we talked about the White House. Well, Ruthie, being Italian, was always invited to the White House for uh, Columbus Day, right. which they don't even celebrate anymore because he was a race. Oh, there. yeah. Uh, yeah. He changed some Nubian slave to a boat or something, and there, you, there goes history, you know, mm-hmm. but, the fact is, uh, we used to go every year. Uh, our, our, we were invited every year for for uh, Columbus Day, and it was all famous Italians. And you really don't realize what an enormous, enormous impact Italians have had on our culture until you get in a group of a hundred famous Italians, right? You know, and it's not just Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and uh, Tony Bennett. It's uh, you know we're talking about uh, Danny DeVito. Uh, Dom DeLuise, <laughs> Joe Pesci, uh, Sophia Loren. I mean, it was it's always incredible. Uh, and people from the world of sports that you wouldn't think about, you yeah. know, be uh, famous Italians. It was really, uh, it was exciting and fun to be there. And I remember one time we sat across the table from Sophia Loren. She was in her mid-70s. Yeah. Absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. I had Danny DeVito to my right and Joe Pesci to my left. Sitting next to Ruthie. Oh, that had to be uh, to be <laughs> to be a dinner guest with those people, being funny and enjoying each other's humor. Oh, you know, across the table, it was absolutely stunning. But the greatest thing that happened was Dom DeLuise was sitting at the podium with the president, who was Bill Clinton, and uh, he it came his turn to say something. So you know, the people at the podium were each asked to stand up. And say a few words, you know. So he stood up and said, before I start, Mr. President, I really would love, if you would do me the honor, uh, I would love a picture. And uh, (laughs) he had a brownie camera with him. (laughs) And uh, so uh, Bill Clinton said, certainly, I'll be glad to. He got up and he stood up and uh, Dom handed him the camera and grabbed Joe Pesci with one arm, Danny DeVito with the other, and smiled for the president to take a picture. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, now I got to know, was, was he wearing that nice, that pretty blue dress that we've seen him wear before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we talked about that. <laughs> but, you know, he was a good friend of, uh, he was a friend of Kinky Friedman's, who's one of my best buddies. Right. And Kinky was invited to the White House uh, two or three times and actually slept over in the Lincoln bedroom and, and, and was invited also under George W. Bush. Mm-hmm to stay over in the Lincoln bedroom. So Kinky Friedman's one of the few people that was an overnight guest of the Clinton White House and the George W. Bush White House. I think that's quite an honor. That is a big honor. There's no doubt. But, you know, you're talking about the Italians, man. They have gives well, some of the stuff that I like, uh, like the mob, man, they give us, like, the big trunks on Lincolns and concrete shoes. I love all that <laughs> stuff. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have that. Kent, they're hollering at me. We got to get to a break, man. We got to get to a break, but it's always good to talk to you, man. Thank you for calling. I enjoyed the visit. Yeah, we'll get back with you here another day or two. Keep up with you, no doubt. But. Oh, we'll okay. all be moving come, back to Texas. I'm, I'm coming to we see may be you. neighbors come before you know it. <laughs> Kent, thank you. <laughs> come see us at Sunset Ranch. Hey, tell Thanks. that beautiful wife we love her. Thank you very, very much. All she right. sends her love right back. All right, take care. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.